Uh, okay, so we're going to um, read through Ephesians 1 through 7, and then we'll talk about Ephesians 2, uh, 1 through 7. And then we'll talk about uh, verses 8 through 10. So, and you are dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that, and whenever you see so that in the Bible, you need to pay attention, because it's going to tell you why. It's going to tell you what what um, what's about to happen, right? So that he did it because, or so that, um, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So we have this beautiful passage about what God has done for us in Christ, even when we were in rebellion toward him. He made us alive uh, together with Christ. He changed everything about our lives. And then we read these words. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. Uh, it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works that no one may boast. For we are God's workmanship. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'll do that next. I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Not for that. So um, when we see the word for, or therefore, we also need to take um, to to take notice of that, we need to figure out what it's there for, right? So, so for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works that no one may boast. So he gives this full overview of who we once were and who we are now in, in, in Christ. And so we were, na we were uh, by nature children of, la of, of wrath, um, but God, in his goodness to us, made us alive. So why would he do that? For uh, by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We are saved by grace and by grace alone. And grace is a gift. It can't be earned, right? If it could be earned, it would cease to be grace. It would become a wage. It would become a payment. The example I usually use is when you get a birthday present or you get a, a Christmas present, you don't turn to that person and say, what do I leave for this? It's a gift. If you pay them back for it, it's no longer a gift, right? It's something that you bought. Um, and so uh, grace is, is a gift. We, we, it's not that we shouldn't earn it. It's that we can't earn it. We literally can't earn it. And we're saved by grace through faith. The Greek word for that is, is pistis. Um, and uh, I want to make sure you understand that we are not saved by faith. We are saved by grace and grace alone. But we are saved by grace through faith. Uh, so faith is just the means by which the grace is received. Last night when I was preparing for this, I had this word picture. And I don't know if it works. Maybe it's apostasy. But I, I got this sort of picture of, of a baseball glove and a, and a baseball. And, uh, and, and the, the glove receives the ball, but it had nothing to do with the ball landing in it, right? It had nothing to do, the person who threw it made the ball go. The glove just caught it. Uh, and I don't know if, if that helps, but uh, we, we have nothing to do with our own salvation. 
our, our faith just receives something that's been thrown our way, that's been given to us. Uh, so, so we are saved by grace through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So um, faith is, is, is only the means by which the grace is received, but faith is more than agreement in a set of ideas. Faith, and I want you to look at me, faith isn't just here. Faith is here, but it isn't just here. It's not just something in our mind. Faith implies an active trust. It implies a confidence in something or someone. I have never, and I will never, do a trust fall. Ain't no way anybody, I don't care who says, don't worry, Mrs. Keezer, I can catch you. Does not matter, will not happen. When I go to camp, we do trust fall sometimes. I never do a trust fall, right? I've seen people do trust falls off of ladders. I have I have real trust issues here, right? Um, and so I have no faith. I have no faith in that person to not drop me to the ground or walk away or whatever it is, right? But something bad's going to happen. You have to have faith in that person to catch you in order to do a trust fall, that's why it's called a trust fall. So faith in Christ is more than just agreement. Yeah, I, that's what I believe. It, it connotes this active trust and this confidence in something or someone, in this case, confidence in Christ, confidence in God, in who he is and what he has done. And it's always based on relationship. Always. The only thing, when Katie was little, we she was so trusting. In fact, when we were looking for a car, the first car lot we we drove on to, we got out of the car. And at that point, it's just, she's two, she's Katie and, and, and Jeff, Josh, excuse me. So they're like two and seven. And the man comes out, the salesman comes out, and Katie walks right up to him and hugs him. And just like we pull her away, like sorry, she's really friendly, right? She trusted everyone. She still does, really. And I remember, I remember having conversations with her about stranger danger, and I, I remember telling Jeff, like, how are we ever going to teach her stranger danger? Like, she loves everybody. She walks up to everybody. She hugs everybody. And so I would have these scenarios that I would give her, and I would say, so if someone drives up and says, your mommy told me to pick you up and take you home, what do you do? I say no and run away. Good. Yeah. If someone comes up and says to you, your mommy is hurt and I need to take you to her, what do you say? I say no and run away. Good. Now, if someone comes up to you and says, I've lost my puppy. I need your help to find it. What do you say? I help him find his puppy. No, honey, you do not do that. You don't have a relationship with this person. You can't trust them. Right? Trust is always based on relationship. So to have faith means to have relationship with that person. But to have faith says nothing about me. To have faith in God, to have faith in Christ, it says nothing about me but everything about God. It's not, oh, look, she's so trusting. It's, it's that I have faith in a trustworthy God to whom I'm at to whom I am bound. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. Have faith, excuse me, anything less, anything less than life-changing, a life-changing, trusting relationship with God in Christ is not true. Let's say that again. Anything less than a life-changing, trusting relation between God and Christ is not truly faith. It may be acknowledgement. It 
maybe an understanding of it. Let's stop there. James says, you say uh, that Jesus, you believe in Jesus, good. Even the demons believe in The demons know who Jesus is. They know what Jesus is. They know Jesus is God. But that doesn't mean they can do anything less than a life changing relationship with God, uh, with God, with God, with Christ. It's not true to you. Now, another possible interpretation for the word faith here is actually faithfulness. Because the word used there can, can mean faith. And it can mean faithfulness. I'm going to open this up. I pause. Um, for by grace you have been saved through faithfulness. And that's a possible interpretation. So what are we to make of that if, if that's what uh, Paul means? So he's saying, if that's the case, he's saying that we are saved by grace through the faithfulness of Christ. We're not saved by our own faithfulness. We're saved by his faithfulness. His faithfulness lived out in unflinching obedience to his father's will and dying. And that's a perfectly legitimate way to, um, uh, to this, this passage. I don't know if he meant faith, faith, or if he meant faith, faithfulness, or if he meant both. He could have had both ideas in mind when we wrote this. But both are, are legitimate. Now I asked you in the book, and this is the question I got very not in the book, in the in the scuba, um, what is the antecedent of this? An antecedent is uh, is a grammatical thing that, that says to what is is the this referring? So what is the this, in other words? What comes before it that tells you what it is? Uh, and so uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. What is it that is not our own doing? Well, it could be faith, that the faith is not our own doing. It's also a gift from God. And, and that's a legitimate way to look at it. But I think more likely, and this is like with all my PhDs and everything that I know, this is what I think. Um, so I think more likely it's the whole process of our salvation. And, and, and that's very much in keeping with all of the whole counsel of Scripture, right? We did nothing to earn our salvation. We can do nothing to deserve our salvation. Um, and so there's nothing we can do to earn. No matter how hard we try, no matter how long. We can't save ourselves. Um, so, so therefore, because there's nothing we either, either it's we didn't come by faith on our own, or as I would uh, say uh, or, or argue for, uh, that we did nothing to save ourselves. Then there's no reason or no grounds for boasting. The word picture that just came into my mind is if you're drowning, and I'm saying you, because if you're drowning, I can actually save you. Swimming is something I can still do very well. And I and I have and I have the you know little patch that says I know how to do that. And I save you, and I get my arm around you, and I drag you to shore, and you are about to drown, and then you go around telling everybody, hey, I was drowning and I, I saved myself. I got myself out of there. Right? We have no more to boast about our salvation, that what we've done for our salvation, than that person. Or, and this is what I wrote down here, um, I, I knew a lot of, especially, I won't name names, the daughter of the, of the, the chief, the commander-in-chief of SAC, when my dad was the chief of SAC. Uh, I've known a lot of Air Force kids that have worn their parents' rank on their shoulders. They, they think they've done something to deserve that. And I remember when my father pinned out his first star, I was in fifth grade, and um, my mom sat down with my, probably just my older sister, younger sister, probably, because she was a teacher. 
party and village. And, and she said, girls, you can be proud of me. You can be proud of what he's achieved. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. So you have no reason to boast. You have no reason to brag. Because it's not your right. You didn't deserve it. Uh, your artists. That's what this is saying. That that we've done nothing to earn it. And neither have we, we uh, neither could we do anything to earn it. Even if we were supposed to earn it, we couldn't. We can't. And we haven't. I mean, we can. Uh, God in Christ has done everything necessary. Everything. Now, verse 10, which I hope we get to, but I don't know for sure, um, tells us that, that it's not by works, but it's for works. We're not saved by works, but we're saved for works. So, for we are God, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we sh that we should walk in them. I love that, that God saves us, and then he has all of these wonderful things he wants us to do that he's already prepared, that we're to walk in, that we're to peripateo in. And I've told you about that word before, too. Um, so God, uh, we are God's creation, and he made us for a purpose. And that purpose is to live or to walk in a way that honors and pleases God. So when I've told you about this word peripateo before, I've told you that it's usually translated walk, but it means a pattern of living, a way of life, or a habitual way of living. My father was probably the most patient human being I ever knew. And his manner of life was to be gentle and to be patient. But he did get angry. It took a lot to get him angry, but he did get angry. But his normal pattern uh, was his normal bent, was gentleness, was um, was uh, uh, kindness uh, and patience. So that's what this is saying. That that we are to our general pattern pattern of living is to look like this. Is to look like Good works. So what does that look like? It's it's doing the things that have been his will since before the creation of the world, right? To walk with Jesus, to do the things Jesus would do. To no longer live in sin. And we're not any longer to live in sin because of what Christ is. And we're to do that not only because we no longer live in sin, as we now live in Christ. And so our lives are to res reflect that reality, that we are no longer in the world, we're no longer dead, we're alive, and we are in Christ. And the way we conduct our life, not I, 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 I was about to say should show that. No, it, it will. Right? It will reflect that reality if we are in Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not for yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared for him. God uh, prepared in the world that we should walk in. I don't know about you, but I want the whole of my life to reflect God's righteousness. To reflect the truth that God, in His lavish love for me, in His lavish mercy, has raised me from death to life. And as a result, I am to walk in that newness of life for God's glory. Father, thank you for the truth of your word. 
Thank you, how it can encourage and convict us. And I, I pray, Father, that every single we desire to walk in the way that honors you, not on our own power, but as the overflow of the abundance of grace. Live in a way that honors you, and may we know the grace that you have given us to share that grace with the world. Hey, that's it for today.